Hello folks and welcome to is probably going to be one of my most insane projects yet. Uh, some of you may have seen the trailer that I posted and some of the uh, posts I've done on social media but I'm going to attempt to build a electric vehicle for a princely sum of 1000 euros or less. Now some people will probably think that that's completely impossible or that I'm going to have a, a glorified golf cart uh, by the time I'm finished. So what I wanted to do in the first video today was just to run you guys through a kind of a top level of what we're doing, why we're doing it and a little bit of the how to. Um, and what I'm hoping that you will take from this uh, series above all is that it doesn't have to be an extremely expensive um, or an extremely restricted uh, vehicle that you can get from a low budget build. Now this came about in my head um, about, a, you know, about a month and a half ago when I was stuck in a hospital bed staring at the wallpaper. Um, and I kind of began because in my head I was already nearly finished the uh, Panzer build. And it kind of rattled around in my head for a while. And recently some of you may have seen the, vi the video that I made where I was able to purchase a complete Opel Ampera or as it's known in the United States, a Chevy Volt battery pack for 600 euros. So, first of all, I'm going to run through some of my high-tech slides here. You know, I'm kind of coming up in the world with the old computer-aided graphics, or in my case, marker-aided graphics. And I think the first question that most people are going to want to know is, why would I want to take on something like this? So I'm nine years at this stuff now, and you know, there, there are kind of, um, any time that I've thought that there would be, you know, that I'd get bored of it and take up golf or something, something else comes along and comes along. And some of you guys may have seen some of the work that I'm doing on Tesla components and the E31 build and all that, all of that great, great stuff. Um, but, you know, so I'm in my head, I'm always thinking, well, what's the next thing, the thing after that, the thing after that. I, I guess, you know, the number one reason that I want to try this is for the challenge. I want to see, can it, can it be done? Can I end up uh, with a practical vehicle for about the same budget as you would do a LPG autogas uh, conversion of a traditional internal combustion engine vehicle. Um, and that figure is, you know, that thousand euros is kind of accessible to a lot more people. And that's the reason here, it's the accessibility. Um, electric vehicles, are perceived to be expensive, they're perceived, you know, a lot of these perceptions are thankfully to the likes of the Tesla Model 3 and so forth, are being chipped away at. But if you look around um, at the kind of amateur car builds that people are doing on YouTube and places like that, um, EVs don't get a look in because you know oh it's gonna cost me 20 grand you know I can't you know how do I start in there I, I don't know how to get a motor I don't know how to get you know how do I even make all this stuff work and um, so this is the why right this is why we're going to attempt it 
it's to bring the whole notion that for a low budget bill that most people would be perfectly comfortable spending on as I say LPG conversion engine swaps upgrades on their cars all that we want to see can we uh, build an electric vehicle conversion uh, for that self same figure as if by magic the next slide appears so I've been posting on social media for about the last week uh, little kind of hints about what I was going to do, to do and the five or six people that actually follow me um, had made some very interesting comments um, and it was interesting to see that you know when I put up kind of a hint that I was going to do this kind of a thing it was just very interesting to see what was at work in those five or six people's minds um, there were there were you know beginning to become ideas that you know what what was I building an electric bicycle or a motorbike or was I going building a lead sled or you know was I going to cheat and use a load of components that I had lying around the workshop um, or you know how was I going to you know fake this particular build um, and I even uh, yesterday uh, it was amazing I even got a little bit of negativity starting that um, well I wouldn't have the budget for a BMS in my thousand euros and therefore I'd better invest in some fireproof clothing anyway we'll, we'll get to that stuff later there are three rules to this build that I'm going to follow. If I break these rules, I will have failed and I will stop. And then you guys can completely roast me. Now, rule number one, no lead acid batteries. Okay. I know there's probably some people out there that, you know, still hold the old lead sleds in a a dear light I don't don't ask me how I know this go back about seven eight years in some of my videos if you can possibly stomach them and a much younger and more handsome version of me will explain to you why lead is a bad plan in fact my car will probably explain it to you better so no lead acid now then people were thinking, oh, you're going to have a one mile range. Well, no. Rule number two, we must achieve a minimum of 70 miles per hour cruising speed. So we want to be able to accelerate out onto a motorway and achieve at least a 70 miles per hour sustained speed. Okay, so it's not going to be slow. Kind of part B of rule number two is we want 40 miles of practical range. So that is not 40 miles at 10 miles per, per hour. Now, nor probably will it be 40 miles at 70 miles per, per hour, but we will achieve a, you know, a practical range. So I can do some motorway, some town driving, you know, some urban driving and we'll get ourselves a nice mix going around that now the 70 miles per hour choice here was fairly simple because we need to be able to get out on motorways there's no point you know having some stupidly slow car that would be bad it would ruin the point of you know the whole making evs accessible to people and so on 40 miles is a kind of an interesting figure. Um, it is a very, believe it or not, practical uh, distance. Um, now I'll get into some more of that stuff later. I want to try to keep this video less than three and a half hours long. Um, so, 40 miles for example, uh, would have been my work commute uh, when I was working. Uh, in another town 
Um, it's also, I believe, a figure that was touted around back in the day as being the distance that most Americans drive in one day. So, I'm sure there's probably variations to that, but those are the figures uh, that we're going to be basing the build around. Number three. The conversion cost must be a thousand euros or less, including the battery. So there is no cheating here. It's not like I put a thousand euros or 997 euros of parts into the car and then I go put a five grand battery in. That's not what we're going to be doing. It's 1000 euros or less, including the battery. Right, now we have the rules out of the way. Now there'll be some little sub rules in here and things that I will do and won't do, but those are the three main rules that the build must comply with. You know, I could get used to these high-tech uh, graphics guys. Might have to invest in another color marker. Right. How are we going to achieve this? Now, this is a very high-level view. We will be getting down into the weeds. You will see me doing everything in this build. There will be videos that will bore the living smeg out of all of you. But I'm trying to just keep this one as somewhat less boring. Anyway, how can we do this? How can we build the vehicle based on the rules that we saw in the last slide with a 1,000 euro budget? Well, the biggest component of all, the biggest cost component of all in an electric vehicle by far is the battery. Now, when I started off at this, it was lead acid. And as I say, we're not using lead acid. That was rule number one. If you want to know why, I explained it to you back in the day. The next choice after lead then was 10,000 euros. That's just a basic figure of what it would have cost you to put together a uh, battery made out of uh, prismatic lithium ion phosphate cells, um, SARSA 2010-2011. Now that has reduced a bit, but you know, even at six to seven grand that you could probably do it with today, uh, that would be our budget long gone. Then we got to a point in the last few years where you could get a battery from a crashed OEM vehicle, like say a Nissan Leaf um, or a comparable EV. And you get those these days, you know, they go for around three grand. But still, that would be our budget long gone. Now, lastly, what happened to me in the last few weeks was um, if you haven't been following the video series I did on the uh, Panzer, the E31 Tesla powered build, I was able to purchase uh, from a really large uh, vehicle recyclers here in Ireland, a full Opel Ampere Chevy Volt battery pack for 600 euros. Now, you might be now screaming at your computer saying, oh, Damien, that was just a fluke. You know, you got, you know, lucky or it was a particular set of circumstances. I can't do that. Your thousand euro vehicle build is BS. Well, guess what happened on Monday? Oh, yeah, they rang me back up. They said, uh, listen, we have another one of those uh, cars coming in in about three weeks time if you want the battery from it. I said, wow, yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, how much do you want for it? Well, we charge you 600 for the last one. How about you give us 500? Job done. So, that is a reasonable precedent for your battery cost. But I know some of you are still going to come on and you're still going to say to me, no, I can't get a Chevy Volt battery for 600 euros. You know, can't do it. It's, it's going to be a grand. It's going to be 1200. It's going to be, you know, my local breaker yard want a grand for it, whatever. Okay, well, 
Do a build with our friend and break the pack in too and you're still here. The ways and means guys, the battery is no longer stupid money, okay? Trust me on this. Now, as we say, ACDC, Hell's Bells. That used to be the big choice back in the, the, the day. You know, what kind of a drivetrain were we gonna put in the car? And you know, if we wanted to buy a AC drivetrain, they were either stupid money, then they came down to less than 10 grand, now we can get them for a few grand, even a few hundred in some places out of, you know, crashed uh, Nissan Leafs, OEM EVs, and so on. But there's ways uh, to do this even a hell of a lot cheaper than that. In fact, there's ways to get motors for free. Don't believe me? Well, I've already, uh, in the first year, that I was involved with EVs, I got five motors for absolutely free. So in this build, haven't made the choice fully yet, but it's most likely going to be a DC uh, motor that we use to propel the car. Now I know, right, I know, already you're screaming at me again. God, my ears are ringing here. I can, I can already he he hear it. Oh, DC motors are no good. They overheat, the brushes wear out, blah, blah, blah. Well, my E39 went under on the road with a DC motor from a, a 1975 forklift in February of 2014. It has covered just coming up to 76,000 miles on the original brushes has never burnt out, overheated, or let me down. They still work, guys. Trust me on that one. So, okay. So, now we got a battery and we got a drivetrain. But now, what about all those expensive control electronics? What about all the bits I need to make the power steering, the power brakes, the battery management, vehicle integration vehicle integration work? Well... We're going to show you how to do it yourself um, using open source components and, to, and tools and community support. A week or so ago, I made a video about you know the how bad I was feeling about having people ripping off my 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 open source designs. Well. In this build, I'm going to be on the, the other side of the fence. I'm going to be using open source technology to enable this build. So, that's it for now, folks. I'm sure you've already tuned out, fortunately. Um, for those of you that haven't, I welcome you on this particular voyage. It's going to be interesting and challenging, to say the least. But I hope that it's educational. I hope we have a bit of fun along the way. And uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Check out the links in the description to my uh, Patreon where you can support me in this and indeed, indeed other uh, projects that I'm working on. Um, also there you'll see a link in the description for my GitHub page where you can peruse my wonderful um, um, open source projects. We will be adding more to that in the future. Um, and that's about it guys. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy this as I've said. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And happy budget electric vehicle building.